I know there's some attention paid to some language in the report about my recollection of events. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. Let me tell you something. Some of you have commented, I wear since the day he died, every single day, the rosary he got from Our Lady of Every Memorial Day, we hold a service remembering him, attending by friends and family and the people who loved him. I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone to remind me when he passed away or passed away. Simple truth is, I sat for a five-hour interview over two days of events, going back 40 years. At the same time I was managing an international crisis, their task was to make a decision about whether to move forward with charges in this case. That was their decision to make. That's the council's decision to make. That's his job. And they decided not to move forward. For any extraneous commentary, they don't know what they're talking about. It has no place in this report. The bottom line is the matter is now closed. I'm going to continue what I've always focused on, my job of being President of the United States of America. I'm of the view, as you know, that the conduct of the response in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip has been um, over the top. I think that, uh, as you know, initially the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. I talked to him. I convinced him to open the gate. I talked to Bibi to open the gate on the Israeli side. I've been pushing really hard, really hard, to get humanitarian assistance into Gaza. Joining us now is Kate Bedingfield, who served as communications director in the Biden White House, David Axelrod, who worked with then Vice President Biden as senior advisor to President Obama, and former Trump communications director, Alyssa Farr Griffin. All three are now CNN political commentators. Also with us, former federal prosecutor and best-selling author, Jeffrey Tubin. David Axelrod, let me start with you. Uh, is that the press conference the president should have had? Well, look, I understand the concept of why he had the press conference, because this thing was uh, red hot and it was out there and he felt he needed to and his people felt he needed to respond to it. Um, whether the response was adequate or whether it creates more problems, I think, is another question. He did contradict elements of the special counsel's report, and that undoubtedly will uh, go on. And, and then he was uh, quite angry not just at the release uh, or at the characterizations of the special counsel, but of what some of the reporters were asking him. It is a fact that this is a problem for the president. The, Anderson, the most damaging uh, things that can happen in politics are things that reinforce a meme that's out there that is hurting you. And the central meme that is hurting the president is this issue of age. It's a big barrier. People don't give him credit for what he's done. They blame him for everything <laughs> that happens. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with their characters or their feelings about his age. So it's not wise to say to a reporter, that's your interpretation. It's not. They, there's reams of polling material about this. So I'm not sure. I mean, he was feisty and energetic. I'll, I'll, I'll say that, but I'm not sure that he solved his problem tonight. Yeah, Kate Bedingfield, I'm wondering what you thought you worked uh, for uh, for the, the president. He, he did call, uh, C, he named Sisi the, the president of Egypt. He said it was the president of Mexico. Um, what did you make of, of that appearance? Well, overall, I mean, I, I agree with David. It was he needed to do it. Uh, I think it was it was smart for them to recognize that the narrative was not in a great place, that he needed to show some urgency on it. I think a couple of things that he did that were effective that I heard. So, you know, he took on directly one of the uh, the kind of pieces, the editorializing uh, that her did that is, was getting traction, the suggestion that he didn't remember the year that his son died. I thought he took that on really effectively. He showed a lot of very genuine emotion. I worked for him for a very long time. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, everything about what he was saying there and feeling there uh, is very real. And so he, I thought he took that on directly, which was effective. You know, I think the second thing he did that was effective here is, is he did show a little swagger. And I think that the swagger does kind of combat the age. I mean, you know, I think you never want to be defensive and you don't want to seem angry or like you're riled up. 
But, you know, I do think in getting a little combative with reporters, he's showing, you know, I, I've got a lot of energy. I got a lot. Of, I've I've I am. I've got a lot of life in me. And so I think him doing that uh, was a good thing. Uh, Alyssa, I'm sure. Listen, I don't think the president did himself any favors in that speech. Um, he undercut two of his biggest messages. The adults are back in charge by sort of being dismissive of, yes, he was exonerated. He's not going to be convicted or tried for this. But there's some really damning pieces of information in here. He had deliberations around Afghan war plans with him. He spoke to a biographer about classified documents who didn't have clearance. This showed a decent level of reckless mishandling of classified information. He's, and he, should, he said in that that he did He said that he didn't. Um, so I think there was a dismissiveness to the seriousness of this. And then on the other hand, they were using this bizarre line to say he stepped away from an international crisis, the biggest attack on our ally Israel since the Holocaust, to go deal with a self-inflicted investigation by the Department of Justice. How is that supposed to inspire confidence? I, I don't know why he went back out. He already said most of this at, um, in Virginia today. But this is this is becoming a five alarm fire for the White House. If to Mexico, Mexico, where did that come from? I mean, that's the only thing anyone's going to remember from this. I, you know, he was exonerated here. And, and I think it's an easy call that he was exonerated. And I think legally, he's never had a problem with this because the issue of criminal intent was quite clearly absent in the Biden case and certainly according to the accusations in the, um, in, in the Jack Smith indictment is very much present in the, in the Trump case. I think they are very different and the report even spelled this out. But Mexico? I mean, politically, how do you explain that? In and if I may say, if we weren't living in the Donald Trump era where there's 91 indictments and he woefully mishandled classified documents and he didn't cooperate with investigations, if this was 10 years ago, this would still be a huge story. Yes, he was exonerated, but there are details in here that show just a level of recklessness and negligence. And I think it was far worse than what the public oh, expected. I don't buy that at all. I, I mean, you know, classified information is so over over. People overclassify so much. Retired people take classified information all the time. I, I, I think legally this is a non-issue. The issue is Biden's age, and I, that didn't seem Caitlin, very helpful to me. Caitlin? Well, can I just say, I mean, on this point about Mexico, I mean, he misspoke on the name of the country in the context of a larger answer about what he's doing to try to get humanitarian assistance into Gaza. So is it a perfect answer? Is it great to misspeak? No, it's never great to misspeak. I, I promise everybody on this panel right now has misspoken and said the wrong name or the wrong uh, you know, the wrong date in a conversation. But, you know, he's he's explaining uh, in great detail the work that he's doing to try to ease that crisis. And so I don't think that we should uh, lose sight of the fact that he's explaining the work that he's doing as president uh, and get so hung up on on one word. Is it is it perfect? I'm sure. Does he wish he had said Egypt rather than Mexico? I'm sure he does. But again, I think, you know, misstating one word. Uh, I don't think we should over crank on that. MJ Lee, you were in the room. I'm wondering what you uh, made of today. Yeah, I mean, Anderson, this was a President Biden, that seemed pretty ticked off, to be honest with you. Uh, he was ticked off about the special counsel report and particularly coverage of it. Uh, he said, even though uh, there's language in there that says he did willfully retain some of these classified documents, he said uh, there's also language that says contrary and that coverage should reflect that. Uh, he uh, mentioned specifically one part of the interview and the report where Robert Hur asked him about uh, the death of his son and when that happened. And he said, uh, how dare dare he raise that. It's none of your business. Uh, he was also clearly uh, ticked off about the questions that this report and all of the memory issues that this report raises, uh, all of the questions that uh, will get fueled even more uh, about uh, the concerns about his age, the concerns about his mental acuity. And he was pretty ticked off when I asked my question uh, to him, uh, which was uh, the fact that you know, he has been saying for a while when people have raised concerns about his age, watch me. Well, a lot of American people who have been watching are making clear that they have concerns about his age. They think he is too old. So why does it have to be him? Uh, when I asked that question, uh, he said, you know, this is your opinion. This isn't anybody else's opinion. Public polling clearly suggests that this is a serious concern that a lot of people have. So, you know, I took this as a, a president who uh, clearly wanted to sort of get out there, uh, show this sort of uh, fighting side to him. And we know in conversations that we've had with uh, Biden advisors, people who know him really well, that they think that they uh, he does sort of well in that setting when he's sort of shouting that uh, sort of fighting 
uh, and fighting back at questions, fighting back at the concerns. So I just wonder if there was uh, sort of this opportunity that the White House saw to put him in that setting, uh, take uh, some of these difficult questions that they expected that he would have. But uh, I know you were talking about this with your panel. The fact that in the very press conference uh, where he was getting asked a lot of questions about his age, his memory issues, uh, he made this uh, important mistake, this notable mistake, saying uh, president of Mexico, Sisi, that clearly didn't help his cause. Uh, but again, I think this was a president that uh, wanted to sort of uh, use his own words to address everything that has happened today. Uh, this White House and this president, they know that these questions about age, his memory, his misspeaks, his missteps, they're not going away anytime soon.